load balancing dual WAN routers. So I thought I would take a moment and let the world of YouTube in on some of my experience I've had over the last few weeks in dealing with load balancing dual WAN routers. So at this client site, they have a lot of surveillance cameras and they're all watched remotely as well as the internet is um, used to monitor the alarm system as well as credit card processing. So you could imagine if the internet goes down, that is a bad thing. So we went ahead and we put in two ISPs. I'm in Toronto, Canada, so this is Rogers, uh, which is a coax cable provider, and Bell, which is telephone DSL. The Rogers connection is Ignite 1 gigabit. Yes, we have one gigabit small business style internet one gig down 50 megs up however one gigabit is not exactly true it peaks at about seven or eight hundred megabytes still very useful the dsl connection is the backup it's only running at 50 megabits uh 50 and 10 up i believe 50 down rogers cable one gig down or real in the real world 800 down and 50 up 50 up is pretty consistent so we want to plug them both into this big rack box here and of course to do that you need a dual round dual WAN load balancing router so I'm a big fan of TP link bit of the underdog but um, their commercial products are actually very reasonably priced and for the most part work great this is the TP link ER5120, well built, solid box, good functionality, the user interface is very good, TP-Link support is fantastic, people there are all great, however, this particular load balancing router, router was manufactured a little early. Um, it is a gigabit load balancing router, however, uh, after lots of trial and error, weeks of working with it, it uh, turns out that it has a limitation on its NAT throughput. Its NAT throughput, uh, the TP-Link claims, is limited at 350 megabits. But in the real world, it's about 200. What does all that mean? That means when you take a gigabit modem and you plug it into a TP-Link load balancer, the maximum internet you can get is about 200 megabits, which is a huge loss of available internet. So this... TP-Link router is going to be returned. Although for the most part, I do say I like their products. So next, I do some research online, and I come across the Ubiquity, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Edge Router. Uh, I think it's the Light 3. You know, nice product, well-built, solid product, tiny. As you can see, it's not rack-mountable. TP-Link is rack-mountable. Problem is two pro twofold. First of all, it's highly technical, um, a little above my knowledge to operate it properly. The latest firmware revision does have some wizards for setup, but you make one small change and mess things up, and it's difficult to restore that unless, of course, you do a firmware backup every time you make a change. So, um, and support. Support is only by email, a little slow, and not very clear. A couple of times I had to re-ask my question in different ways twice to get the answer, even though my question was the same. And a uh, nice product, uh, price about $150 in Canada, probably about 100 um, in the U.S. Back to the TP-Link for a second, pricing, I missed that. Pricing of this is about, I think it's about 200 bucks. These are all very low price for, for commercial grade load balancing router or small business grade. So go back online, do some more research, and come across the Cisco. Of course, everybody knows Cisco. This is the... Uh, can't remember the model number. Can you see it? Can you see it? No, out of focus. It is the RV325. Nice part about this load balancing router is it also is a switch. So I can probably, in this site, eliminate a switch. It's only 14 ports because two are used for uh, LAN 1 and the lower one is LAN 2. LAN 1 and LAN 2, that's our Rogers Gigabit and our Bell DSL 50 Megabit. And um, 
right now if one of these is running to a bigger switch and the other one is running directly to the computer I'm working on for testing purposes. This does come with rack mounting ears, so I will likely uh, mount it somewhere in this rack, which needs a good cleanup. I'll have equipment in there. And eliminate probably this older Cisco uh, 24 port switch because as you can see, well, there are a lot of ports being used. I might have to keep it. Anyway, off topic. So the Cisco um, basically works great out of the box. Very little setup and uh, very basic setup. The interface is very easy and the telephone support is great. Had to call them a couple of times. Um, it's my first time working with Cisco product at this level, so but their support was great. Um, and uh, the one small issue was, let's see if I can bring it up here. I know I should be using screen capture software for this, but I don't have time to do that and edit a video, so I'm doing this in one take. So, 192.168.1.1 and advanced exception confirm and default username CISCO and password. I'm not going to share that with you. <laughs> Let's never remember that password. So the one thing that took a while to figure out and was very simple was, I think it was under system management, yeah, under dual WAN, I originally assumed the correct, correct option should be load balance. But what happened is, when I did load balance, is it assumed the speed of the slower connection. So, in other words, the internet would only operate at 50 megabits, which is the slower Bell DSL connection. When I changed the setting to Smart Link using primary WAN 1, which is the higher speed Rogers connection, the gigabit, um, things work great. I'll just do one last speed test here. Although, this is a video server that I'm working with, so it's not really the best computer for speed testing. As it's pretty busy monitoring about 30 surveillance cameras. But let's see what happens. Speed test. Two hundred. Three hundred. Four hundred. Well, let me just switch over. KVM switch to a different PC, and let's just look at results. I won't take all this time in the video with speed tests. Um, well, there you go. See, it peaked out at 640. Like I said, it's supposed to be a gigabit connection. Let me unhighlight that so you can actually see it. It's supposed to be gigabit, but it averages four to 600 megabits. Still great for a, a $200 a month, maybe $250 a month small business service. Anyway, there you go. So if you're looking for a load balancing router, Hopefully this video will save you some time. Uh, my pick from my personal experience, trial and error, is the Cisco RV325. I haven't used it enough to memorize the part number. RV325. That's what I would go with. Save yourself your time. RV325 is about $280 compared to $150 compared to about $200. All good product, but at the end of the day, my books, the Cisco RV325 wins. Hope this video was helpful to you. Thanks and have a great day.